Hey, good evening to everybody. Good evening. Good evening. I want to thank God for today. Yes. Okay? Because without God, this day isn't here. Yeah. So I want to thank God for this day. I want to start out just giving thanks first to my mother and my father. Amen. Because without them too, mm -hmm. I'm not here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I want to give thanks to my sister Kathy and my brother-in-law Andrew Green. Mm -hmm. Because they allowed me to come down here from New York some 38 years ago. Which might have saved my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now my, my brother-in-law Andrew Green was not only, when I got down here, he was my brother-in-law. But eight months later, he became my boss. And he was my boss for 35 years. Okay? Now, during the course of those 35 years, I gave him all kinds of problems, I'm sure. But you know what? God puts people in your life for a reason Amen. and for a season. Amen. And the God was in his life, and he kept me around. He would lay me off, but he'd bring me back. You know? And God was working all the time with me, little by little. I want to thank people like Reverend Mike. Mm. Reverend Mike tutored me. Mm. When I was struggling, he tutored me. I used to go to his place up here on Cooper Street yes. where he worked at night. Mm -hmm. And he tutored me, prayed with me, and, yeah. and we read scripture together. Yeah. And he talked to me about life. Mm. Okay, I was no young kid at the time now. I was a grown man. At least I was supposed to have been a grown man. Mm. Okay? I want to thank people like Mother Cor, Cor Thomas. Mm, yes. Bless okay. Bless That's my second mother. Mm -hmm. She allowed me to live with her for years. Mm. Before I, she lost her daughter, who I was dating at the time, and even after. Mm -hmm. And if she was alive here right now today, she'd tell you I'm her son. Mm. She led me to this church right here. Well, if it had not been for her, I wouldn't be standing in front of you in this mm. building today. She Bless brought me to this church. So I thank her for that. I want to thank my past pastor, Reverend McGinnis. Yes. Yeah. Reverend McGinnis had this vision long before he passed away. He had this vision. He came to me on the phone one night and asked me, what did I think about being a deacon? I said, Pastor, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Did you talk it over with the congregation? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, talk, you mean me? Mm -hmm. He said, yes, mm -hmm. I mean you. He said, I already talked it over with Deacon Ronnie, and he's on board. I walked for a long time, as one of the deacons said here, I walked for a long time, but sometimes you have to do things a little longer yeah. so you can get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Yeah. And one thing God don't make is mistakes. Yeah. So God had to prepare me for tonight. Yeah. Okay? I want to thank all of North Baptist Church, past and present, because they prayed for me. You don't know how many times, 20-some years ago, I walked through that door. And I walk up front when they ask, does anybody need prayer? And I, I'm up. And then mm -hmm. I, next day you know, the world had me again. Mm -hmm. Six months later, I walked back up. Mm -hmm. The world had me again. Yeah. But you see, the plant seed, it's like a farmer. He plants a seed. And then he waters that seed. I was being watered. When people were praying for me, my grandmother was deep in church. She prayed for me. Many of North Baptists came to me. Deaconess Hawkins came to me with books. Read this book. I read a few pages. You know, see her six months later, give me another book. Read this book. I read a few pages. You know, but it was water on that seed that was planted. Okay? It took me a long time to get myself together. I want to thank my wife. Because my wife. something this woman became my girlfriend when I was still in the world mm -hmm. okay five years of our life our first five years as 
dating, most women would have walked away from me. Walked and, and turned their back and never even want to mention my name. I'm telling you how I was living. But this woman stood beside me. Yeah. People say to me today, how do y'all be together? They ask me, how are y'all together? Because y'all so different. Because you just don't know what this woman means to me. You don't know what she, she was there for me when no one else was there for me. She was there for me. I'm going to keep it short, but I'm going to tell you some things that just how dedicated this woman was. She would drive me to work on Thursday. Thursday was my payday. I would leave the job at 12 o'clock. She would come at 3.30 to pick me up, ask the boss, where's Tom? Tom left at 12 o'clock. She wouldn't hear from me till Sunday. I call her up, can you come get me? Now think about it. There's a lot of women in this church right here today. Think about it. Would you have been there? Let's, let's talk about it. Would you have been there? That woman stood beside me through all my muck and mouth. 20 years ago, 21 years ago, when God told me, it's time for you to get right. You've been through enough. I bumped my head enough times. And I went away and we kept in contact while I was there writing and everything when I came back home she said can we get married now mm. I Amen. said I got to do six more months of recovery so I'll have a full year mm -hmm. and then we can get married yeah. we got 21 years today married yeah. Yeah. Because all during that time, we had a daughter. All right. We had a daughter. Yeah. Okay? Bless now, I'm going to tell you something. I don't call her a stepdaughter. She's not my biological child, but I don't call her no stepdaughter. I don't, a step is something to go up on. I don't go up on her. That's my daughter right there. Yeah. We've been through it. Rough times. But you know what? Love. What is God? Love. love. We have love. So it don't last. We have to have our problems. Why? Because we two different individuals. I mean, everybody goes through it. Fathers and daughters, sons and wives, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, we all go through it. We got to go through it. But we got love for one another. I got two beautiful grandsons. She calls the Yeah. And I try to instill in them the good things that were instilled in me so that they don't have to take the path that I took. Yeah. You see, the journey in which I went, the road is rough and it's gotten rougher than it was when I was doing it. Okay? So you don't want to try to take that path because a lot of people who went my path ain't here today. They ain't here. They gone. And some of them may be up top, some may be down below. I don't know. <laughs> what I do know is God had his hands on me. Okay? I know that. All right? You see, when I was in the streets of New York at 3, 4 in the morning, God had his hands on me. When I fell asleep on the D train and woke up at the... At the depot, mm. God had his hands on me. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in the streets of Camden, yeah. two o'clock in the morning, in an alleyway somewhere, yeah. God had his hands on me. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in Philadelphia somewhere, didn't know a soul, God had his hands on me. Yeah. So I could stand here today and tell you this, so that if you know somebody going through something, don't turn your back on them, because God got his hands on them. I got a lot of brothers in here right now who work with me over the years. I want to thank all y'all for coming. 
Mm-hmm. I want to thank y'all for the years y'all worked with me because I'm looking at y'all three and y'all don't work with me anymore. Would y'all stand up? Mm-hmm. You too, Greeny. Mm-hmm. Which is to me the second most dangerous job in the world, next to the nuclear plant. Mm-hmm. Most of us got in that business off the streets. We didn't know anything about anything. Amen. And this man right here taught us things over the years, made us the men that we are. Mm-hmm. We didn't always agree with his methods. <laughs> Believe me, we didn't. <laughs> but we benefited from his teaching. Yeah. 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 Okay? He's yeah. my brother-in-law in life. He was my boss on the job. And believe me, he let me know the difference. <laughs> when, when we entered the gate at 645, I was not brother-in-law. I was just like any other worker on the job. And then after 3.30, we became family again. This gentleman right here, we worked 110 hours in a week. Yeah. 110 hours, just me and him. Getting it. Chasing that dollar. Faithful man. Call him up 2 in the clock in the morning say, yo, man, we got to be there. And guess what? He'd come from Delaware, get there before I left school. (laughs) Faithful man, my man. I get to count on him. And he's here with me today, now thank you. My two brothers right here, we've had many conversations about life together. Mm. But no ways about the job, see? Sometimes when you're on a job, you can talk to brothers about things in life because you have things in common. These two gentlemen right here, we talked about all kinds of stuff. We've been through some of the similar situations so we can relate with one another about it. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm glad to see them come out and support me tonight, too. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Reverend Graves, you said something as you were talking up there tonight. You said, had you seen me 20 years ago? If you had seen me 21 years ago, you would not think I was ever going to be ordained as a deacon or anything. Okay? But God, that, that is a, but not God knew when nobody else knew, God knew where I belonged. When nobody else had a thought, when I was the worst person you could think of to some people, God knew yes. my heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. He knew I was a good person inside. Yeah. I was gone. confused. Yeah. So he had to clean my mind. Yeah. Amen. And he did that. And today, they got a song. I'm not going to try to sing it. <laughs> they say, if you look back over my life. Hey, yes, sir. Yeah. And you think Take things over. I can truly say to you today. I am blessed. Thank you.